SZA, name drops you first song. Th there's no way this gets old. This has to be like the coolest shit. Every time somebody show respect like that, yeah, I appreciate nice it. Nice bar from her too. Good bar. Welcome to our year end version of the Etceteras. I'm your host, Eddie Gonzalez. I'm joined by the league leader in minutes, points, and turnovers, Kevin Durant. Total, like you've played more games than everybody, but yeah, league leader in turnovers. Congrats! I appreciate that. Yeah. Maybe they'll name an award after that. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Durant, most turnover award. <laughs> Yo, what a sick award that! It's a sick one. Yeah, you really are like thirty when you walk in the gym. It's kind of insane. Do you? Is it easy to score thirty? Like you make it look easy. No, it's not easy. Um, but I mean, I've been in the league for long enough, man. I know how to. Score in the NBA, you know what I mean? I think that's a skill that you have to master if you want to be a scorer, is to learn how to get points, you know, in the NBA from cuts, from, you know, in the bonus, getting in the bonus, like little stuff like that. So tricks of the trade also helps you as a scorer. And I've been in the league long enough. Nice part of the schedule now, you guys have taken care of business. I don't want to say anybody is, you know, a lesser team or whatever, but you do have the Warriors and Bucks coming up. Over here as a fan, I go, oh, yeah, that's a test. Over there where you're standing, it's another game. It's an opportunity to play good competition. Like, how is your viewpoint of these guys, yeah, the last two champions? Oh, uh, yeah, just like that. Good opportunity for us to, um, you know, obviously every game is an opportunity for us to grow as a group and to get more reps in and, Guys to get more confidence. That's how we look at it. But you also see these are two of the better teams in the league, and you know um, it's going to be a good test for us to see what we've, you know, how, what we've built over this time. See if we can apply it to some teams that are unique. They got some unique players, different type of players. They run a different type of system, so not the generic traditional NBA system. So it's going to be good to see if our defense can hold up against that. And um, and also they're the same way. Both teams are the same way on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, different approaches, unique approaches to the game. You know, gr great coaches that know how to scheme up and make adjustments on the defensive side. So yeah, it's going to be a test for us, and we always look at it like that. But at the same time, we know it's another game in the regular season for us to grind it out, get better, figure out who we are, keep building. I think those guys see you in the same light. I know Giannis spoken highly of you. Obviously, the Warriors, your for former teammates, spoken highly of you as well. I think it's you know it's a game to get up for. We got KD. We got, we got yeah, KD. Yeah. I mean, Giannis literally grew up watching you. He's, again, he's, he called you the best player over and over and over again. And I think for him, it's you know they got you in the yeah. playoffs, tough series. And yeah, yeah, I think I think I definitely think teams get up for us, and they know that um, if they don't play their best basketball, it could be a tough night for them. So yeah, they get up for us, and they look at us the same way because you got myself and Kyrie and Ben, unique players too that can you know affect the game in different ways. So, yeah, they see us in that same light, um, but they actually are the last two champions. So um, I feel like we, uh, we're we trying to get to that level of play. Last basketball thing, because I want to talk about Scissor's album for like 45 minutes, but <laughs> I, I had got into this convo on Twitter. You, you guys sat eight players against the Pacers, and it was a convo. It's basically like, yo, I paid X amount of dollars. These guys aren't yeah. playing. And, and, so my response is, and I get a rap for being pro player, and I am. Like, one of my best friends is a player. I'm a pro player. I'm sorry. But it's easy to say when it's not your ankles, your knees, your, your, you know, your hip, whatever it is. It's easy to say when it's not your body. You guys have had the most games of the league, yeah. nine games in 14 days at that point, four games in five days. I think they did it twice already, yeah. most back-to-backs. A lot. There's a lot going on. So to be the player who hears that, I guess what is your perspective? Because it's not like get over it, fans. I'm sure, but it's like you gotta have a little understanding of what you guys are going through too, right? Yeah, I would hope they do. Um, and I don't understand that you are expecting to see your favorite players out on the floor that night, but that's just how the NBA is. That's just how sports is. You know, some guys get you know when they get a chance to maybe get a day here that uh, help them, you know, in the long run, they're going to use it. And we've known this has been the, the system in the league for a while now, you know. So at this point, I think the fans should understand. 
Yeah, I always interrupt. You. <laughs> it wouldn't be a show without it. Right. Uh, but I think the fans should understand our our side of it as well, just as much as you know. We understand when they come to games. We know we understand that's a you know important moment for people. So we try our best to be out on the floor. Um, but you know the you know the situation with the league. You know the system. You know how these guys operate. Yeah, I think you know. I understand why somebody would be upset. Say, hey, this is the one out of the year. I was waiting to see. Um, but there is a lot to it. It's not that Jock and, and the Nets just wanted to stiff Indianapolis. Exactly. You guys have played there already this year. You got, you have multiple guys off. Uh, Ed, Ed Sumner's recovering from Achilles surgery. Mm -hmm. Ben Simmons had back surgery. Mm -hmm. Seth and Joe, who missed the game as well, had mo multiple ankle surgeries within the last year. You obviously – Year 16, yeah. Ky Kyrie year 10, you know, there's a lot to it. So it's yeah. not just like, yo, these are the guys we want to get over on. And it, it is what it is. Yeah. Every team in the league does this. I mean, it's, and, and you look at the performance team around the NBA, around sports in general, it just stepped up another level. So they, they're actively watching the schedule, seeing when we can get our high-minute guys some days, um, maybe an extra day to get you know get some recovery time in, so we can be ready for the next week of games because we're gonna have a back to back or, you know, we're gonna be traveling. So we're just trying to preserve our bodies for a long run, and if we can take a day here and there, it definitely helps. It's good for the mental, it's good for the physical, you know, to um, good for recovery just to be away for a day and then get back because we move so fast every day we at this thing. So like, when you can steal a day, especially when you're playing so many minutes, is key. Yeah, I mean, and you guys won the game. The young fellas came and, through. And it, twin. Was, it was just perfect. It, it went perfect. We won the game. Young guys got great experience. Um, dudes that don't play got great experience. You know, we end up upset in this team. We were down double digits yeah, a yeah. few times in this game. We was able to steal it from them. Keep our we move up in the standings a bit. We had it. I think we're tied with Indiana. So it did. A, we tied with Indiana on the year. I think with yeah. two and two against them. So I th it just did a lot for us. I think it was a productive move, and it, it helped in the long run. One of those wins that can create momentum. I, I kind of laughed at the end. I think uh, Ian Eagle and, and Sarah Kustak, they were mentioning, like, yo, these guys are never in at the end of the game. It's getting a little tricky because they're not used to closing these games like this. Yeah. And, and, you know, it got dicey, but they won a great win. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I just – it was an argument I got into on Twitter, and I'm like, I'm sure Kevin hears it and has heard it. Yeah, a million I've heard times. it. I've heard it plenty of times, but I think more fans understand now. Yeah. They're not, uh, you know, you get your one or two here and there, but most people understand this is the way of the league now. Yeah, I mean, it it is it is what it is. No league penalties for that. The league has actually fined teams and then done that for that before. But like I said. Real situations happen, and Nick Claxton at Hammy. Yeah, Roy yeah exactly. I think second it's, in minutes, yeah. is, is, you know, it's it's a it's lot. hard in sports to to like plan that that long ahead. Like buy some tickets a month before, and, yeah. and think you're going, you know, it's going to work out perfectly for that day. You just got to you got to be watching the league. I'll be watching the the you know injury report just to see what's going on as a fan, just in case you know one of your favorite players is not going to be there. So. I know it's unfortunate, but like I said, that's just part of the league now. I'm ready to hear. Your your favorite albums of the year. I know you put a lot of thought into it. Mm. You listen to a lot of music. Let me I, go in my notes. Yeah, let's see. Let's see where you're at. I can, well, you're gonna have to start it off. All right. Since this, this was your idea. Okay. So I got five. Right. Uh huh. Number five is. So these are your 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 favorites, or you think are are the just flat out best albums? Isn't that like the same thing? Like it, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Isn't that like? I, this is what you listen to the most. Yeah. I mean, this isn't like my. Spotify year end thing, but these are the albums I thought were the best of the year, yeah. and I enjoyed the most. All right. So, my number five is Kodak Black, Back for Everything. You actually made this album a part of my kind of process. I like that album. And what is this song called? Smackers. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was one of my one. favorite songs of the year. That was that was a that, that was, was a dope one. album. That was um, one. Okay, so my number four is. Brent Fayez, Wasteland. I don't know if I said his name right. But so Fayez? 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 He went to a Nets game recently. I, I seen him there. I didn't think I was him I said until I walked up on. I was like, oh, I got to see him. Had the hair out. Like, yeah. he, he's, he looked like a star. He looked like, yeah, he definitely did. I love that he grinded his way up to what he is now. He's is he an independent artist? I can tell you right now. He, he was for some time. You know, he did an article, I think it was with Vice, 
but he just basically explained him and his manager explained this is how i make money and this is how much money i make and it was just like yo i do a show for four thousand dollars i do like six of those a month i do this that, and the third and it was it was fascinating like he's grinded his way up from that too he did he yeah, built, he built he's his, independent he's uh, his own he's he a nice fan base too man they love him number three i'm already putting SZA sos in there that's crazy to me it's just what two days three days i'm I can't, it's just, is that amazing to me? Let me ask you, because I could talk for the album all day. His name drops you, first song. Th there's no way this gets old. This has to be like the coolest shit. Every time. It has to be like. No matter if it's from a, a, a new artist that just came out yesterday, or oh, fucking SZA, yeah. <laughs> Somebody show respect like that. Yeah, I appreciate nice it. Nice bar from her, too. Good bar. Pressing it's <laughs> like KD. <laughs> Like that, I had to that, listen that, twice. I'm like, is this, did she say something I, else? No, she said Katie. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Can't get old. So, all right. I have that. I There's like three songs in there that could be my favorite song of the year. She. she Are we going to talk about this album at one point? We can talk about or it right we going to talk about it now? We're talking about it right now. Uh, yeah. She is so talented that she makes me want to have relationship problems to feel <laughs> how she feels. Like, she's just like. Yo, she just, she, she's puts it together so well, and it's like she really details the inner parts of her brain, like, <laughs> and it's just like she can make a whole song out of something so small, like, she, man, she, it's like few songs that I just can't stop listening to. The song Far, the song Snooze, and Gone Girl, like, they're just, Gone Girl. she says something, and she has these two lines, one of them is like, I destroyed everything, so now I'm free. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And then there's a part on far, like that somebody's talking in the beginning. It says, if nobody wants you, then you're free. Yeah. She's clearly like toying with this idea of freedom in her mind and just peace yeah. of mind. And somebody in my in my thirties figuring my my damn self out, I'm like, oh, I, I get that. Because me and you had this conversation the other day. Being obligated to people for whatever, it's so taxing sometimes mentally. And I'm like, I, I get what she's saying. Now that I've ruined the shit I have, I'm cool. Like, yeah. I love the album. I don't know if it's better than Control, but if you ask me in a year, it might be. It's pretty amazing. It's an amazing album. I agree with everything you said. I feel like she is definitely on a journey, a search to like figure out what it all means. Like these, these, like you said, these relationships, stepping into this lifestyle of being scissor. Like I imagine how crazy that is from humble beginnings like we know her story before she became SZA like mm -hmm. so she comes she goes from that to being one of the biggest artists in the world for this long period of time she probably done seen and been through a lot and you can hear it yeah I mean a song like smoking on my ex pack where she's basically saying like I'm really her like fuck y'all you yeah, know what I mean exactly like, and I, I love that shit I love when people come into that confidence, yeah. especially somebody like her who's a megastar. She's, she got that one album and I mean, it, it slowly climbed and now she's multi-platinum megastar. And then she can give you a vulnerable song like Blind and like and, and speak from a whole different perspective. Like she, at 23 songs, that surprised me. She put that many on there, but I'm like she's been away for a while and like I'm sure she got so much on her mind, but it was just, it was just different vibes on here, man. I just... I, it was needed in music, I think. I understood why it took five years, which I, I never I, I appreciated. Don't. I still don't. Five so, years? So so, so we got to expect that from now on? So SZA being SZA, she's done interviews. In separate interviews, she said, "This is I might not do another album for a long time. In another interview, she says, I want to do albums every year. I'm going to get them out. Yeah, but I she, don't believe her. I don't either. I don't believe either version of that. I don't believe anything <laughs> she says. <laughs> she's going on tour. I seen that. I can't wait. We, she's here March fourth. The Garden. I, I gotta check my I'm schedule. Going. Your cousin Tone, he's like, let's do DC too. He's he's like my R and B partner. He's Tone sent me. He sent like three or four songs <laughs> in a group chat. Like, yo, this it. <laughs> he on the same. Well, he on the same way. Yeah, man. that's my little. That's my, my little guy. cousin Tone. Shout uh, out to Tone. Man. He's like, yo, we gotta do DC. We gotta do New York. We might be able to do Boston too. I'm like, yo, I'm down Boston, to like follow damn, the SZA tour. Fire. Yeah, you, that'd be fun. I'm down to like follow the SZA tour. I'm just just catch them all on the East Coast. It's just like when an album actually lives up to your expectations, mm -hmm. it just makes it. And when you know all the songs, yeah, 
and you know it's just a moment yeah it's just a moment so you're part of this so that's amazing for you i'm jealous oh yeah for sure i'm jealous um okay moving on into my that's list. your third that's my third and it's probably end up being one at some point <laughs> Uh, number two is Babyface Ray Face. It's the album he put out earlier in the year. Okay. Not my album. Yeah, just put yeah. out. A I like that album. Ago. I like them both a lot. I like. I, I didn't. I haven't. I haven't one. downloaded the uh, the new one. Like really locked in on. Yeah. It. Took it in yet? But I'm gonna I'm check it out. We we he came to a game as well. Real Top cool it dude. Up with him. Cool Real as cool hell. dude. His his man King Hendrix. They have one of my favorite songs of the year. So oh, you played yes. it. Called Velvet. That's definitely my top five songs of the year. That might be my favorite verse of the year. Like. Course side ecstasy for my dream. That verse, like, he really that verse went crazy. yeah, that that it was an isn't a running for versity year for me. He too. he went crazy. I had to. It's I don't seek everybody out that comes to the game. I don't always want to meet everybody, but I had to meet Hendrix and tell him like, yo, that shit was amazing. I had to and tell had him to that Ray we listened to that song every day this summer. I had to tell him so. Yeah. That's my number two. My number one is Future. And it's just like hold up. Go ahead. I Go know ahead. what you're about to say. I'm going to wait till you finish. I think it has like five of the best songs of the year on it as well. Easily. He just did not miss on this entire album. Easily. Didn't miss. Puffin' on Zooty is probably my favorite song of the year. Did that was your favorite song of the year? I album? think it's my favorite song of the year. Wait For You is like second. Okay. So this is how good the album is. There's other songs. I love Chickens. I love. Man, he, like, I that's just, a perfect I, I love album everything on here. to me. So it's crazy the future is getting better. Yeah. Because he's got one of the best catalogs of yeah. all time. So I have him first. I know what you're about to say. What the I fuck? Know, I know who's missing from my list. No her loss. No her loss. Been a good year. I like so her he loss. So he can't. You, you like uh, uh, Wasteland more. Than I like her it loss? more. Had more of a hold on me. Jackie Brown. Like there's a lot of good stuff there. That's crazy. I knew you were gonna say this though. That's so insane. I know actually, list. I know it's on your list. Honestly, never mind. Wasn't on my list either. In a great. I, I can great understand that. I like the album, but I can understand why it's not top five. Liability's probably my songs. Like I love, songs I love that album, on. but it's not in my top five this year. Been a good year. I mean, I, I respect it. Right. I respect it. Let's hear your list. We're gonna have all right. A couple of ours. I'm sure we have overlap. Yeah, and it started with five. Uh, Kodak, back for everything. I like that. Short album. What I think, eleven songs. Yeah. Got joints that I still listen to to this day on there. You've been preaching Kodak to me since I met you. Yeah, and it was since, also yeah. like he's just as good as everybody else. I'm like, come I, on. Come I on. really leaned into the Kodak being a Kodak stand in like 2018. Like he was always like, all right, I, I, I fuck with him. Like I like his shit. And then I was just like, yeah, it's undeniable now. Around 2018, I remember finding the song that eventually became Bodak Yellow. And it was one of those moments like, yo, y'all gotta listen to this. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. And he was like a kid. He was. Like, yeah. It's like I, a whole different person. When I first heard Skirt Skirt, probably. Skirt Skirt was awesome. I, I forget what year that came out. But when I first heard that, I was just like, who the f- Like, yeah, this young boy had got it. So, f- so for me, this album was like the culmination of your hype. Because when I heard it, it's like, I see the light now. Yeah. I yeah, see the light. Which yeah. doesn't mean I didn't like his other stuff, but this was like yeah. that great. And also, I also like KTB that he just put out. But I, I would say back for everything. Yeah. It's fine. Gemini Rights, Steve Lacey. Another yeah. album. When I came to your house in L.A. this summer, this was all we heard for like the week I was there. Yes, I mean, like I said once again, ten songs. Like it's easy to get through. Like listen to this in what thirty five minutes. Yes, yeah. thirty five minute album. Like you can play this over and over again, and every vibe is different. Like he, I loved it. This is this is an album I've seen a lot of women's Instagram stories. I love this album. Third, Seven Shots, Thirty Eight Special. Great album. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him. Yeah. Real chill guy. Fuck with him in general. Great album. That's high up on my list, too. Could Eight have been songs. On this. Eight songs. South's Pizza might be my favorite like verse of the year. You like South's Pizza? That song is so hard. That first verse where he continues the rhyme pattern for the yeah. whole. He I love that. that shit. Like the rap nerd in me was yeah. just like, this is it right here. Yeah. Um, two, we both pull up in two lambs. With well, like a halal like, plate, hello. like yeah, he, he, his, his metaphor, that, like, his hey, metaphors is crazy. You fucked me up Meta- with that one. Yeah, uh, love that album. I on money was my favorite song on there. Oh. Still rock that to the to this day. Um, second, her loss. I mean, self I mean, it's it's we've talked about this album a bunch. I went out uh, with 
my running back co-host Chandler Parsons mm -hmm. it's basically just played the whole album at the club yeah and it was fine everybody loved it nobody complained yeah I, I played doing shoot around before the games I played everywhere actually yeah it was uh top to bottom you know I already know do you have Dan a favorite song Privileged Rappers and then uh um uh, what's the other one it's hard to uh Middle of the Ocean. Okay, mine has changed because it was Middle of the Ocean, then it was Jumbotron. But I think I'm Jumbotron. Jumbotron is up there. I think I'm done in that it's it's spin about you. I think that's the one. You like that the most? No, no, I'm tripping. I'm reading it wrong. Hours in silence, the R and B joint. You are an R and B head. Yeah, I can't help it. Yeah, I would say privileged rappers first, middle ocean, then jumbo drawing. Okay. Top three for me. So what's number one? Future. That was that album top to bottom. I I think where I where I first heard it though, where I was, it just it just made it it just made it a moment for it's me. It's made that much better? Yeah. And on top of just every song <clears throat> every song was I don't think he had any misses on here. I wanna say he went I never liked you. Did he is, go did he go sixteen for sixteen? There's no misses on there to me. Like truly sixteen for sixteen though. Or yeah. do you skip anything? I don't skip anything. And then he did the and then he did the deluxe and I like every one of those songs too. I, I think Future is kinda like he he's got the versatility like Drake. Like he can make Yeah. I mean, Hendrix's one of my favorite albums ever. So he can do that and he does that on here as well. But I think he's as good a rapper as there is alive. And what I mean is like his skill as a rapper, his ability mm -hmm. to put his style on a song with anybody. He's rapped with everybody. Everyone. I know some people like this type of rap won't put it in that box and say he's a good rapper or whatever. I think he's as good a rapper I think so as there is alive. His his metaphors, his imagery. Transparency, he's honest, he's vulnerable, he's all of that. He's confident, aggressive, like he, he really is authentic with his music. I don't feel like it's a, a, a lie at all. His most successful album ever, um, this is? Yeah. First yeah. week I mean, sales. he had a number one song on there, didn't he? He had a number one song with Drake. Also, that's one of the best songs of the year. Wait for you. like e Easily. So. So you said, but you said Puff No Zooties was your, your favorite. It was my favorite song of the year. Not not by a long shot, but it was. Like, I know it was in my uh, mind. And uh, my thing about it is, too, is the production value for everything. Yeah. The big video he did with Drake. Uh -huh. The big video he yeah. did for, uh, what's it called, 712. Like, it just felt like. We knew Future was a star, but it's like he's like a yeah. superstar now. It felt like no a movie denying. for sure. Yeah, like an elevation of yeah. an all-time great already. Yeah. You got any um, honorable mentions? Um, Give me three of them. Okay. Let's hear yours. Uh, three, I'll give you uh, No Rest for the Wicked, Ransom. That came out in April. Yeah. That shit was top to bottom, crazy. Sorry, the kid. I love that album. I remember you was playing that shit nonstop. I love that album. That was fire. And um, Benny the Butcher, uh, Tanner Talk Four. Okay, I'm gonna go a little. I'm gonna go different because there would have been some overlap. Uh, Drift season forever. Gonna great, can't great. forget. Can't forget that. Oh, uh, I want to shout out my. I'm biased, but I'm not because I truly think this is one of the best albums I heard. My friend from back home, my brother, his name is C Plus. His album named Tenured. I'm going to send it to you because I yeah, want you to hear it. I want to check it out. He's from Sacramento, but he also spent some time East Coast growing up. He's like us. He just loves raps. Yeah. And me, myself, personally, I feel like he found the best blend of, like, real him and rap him and put them mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And it was – it was, it's a dope mix, so I love it. Um, let's you played see. it a lot? I played it a lot. And, and, you know, I bet this is weird for you because some of your friends are some of these rappers anyway, but – to have somebody you're that close with and to hear their music, which is so personal, mm -hmm. it can be a little awkward, but it's like this. I told him this. This is the first album of his that I just like really locked yeah. in on, could, could play with no awkwardness and just loved it. Uh, I think he just did a great job uh, I'm check that out. with that. And, and again, I can't help but be biased, but like as a music head, I really thought it was great yeah. music. Um, and number three honorable mention... I'm gonna go with Money Man, Big Money. You are a huge Money Man fan. You tell me I gotta lock in on him even more. He's just like, this is gonna sound like a this, but it's not. 
I know exactly what I'm going in, getting when I go in, and it's like easy listening. And so it's like the flows are gonna be on the point. Flows the flows are is great, and he's gonna say yeah. a bunch of like slick shit. Yeah. And I, I go to him a lot in the gym. Like I just really so I can knock out my cardio, do whatever I'm doing. But I know exactly what I'm getting. I I love that album. JT I gotta listen to more Money Man. Put, like he swore by Money Man to me. He got me to convert. So I'm Word. Go with yeah. So I'm going. Right. Well, uh, what about song? Like w- w- some songs you feel like need to be mentioned because I have one that I have to talk about. Which one? London by Bia and J Cole. This is some of the best rapping I've heard in like forever. Yeah, me too. They went so fucking they, insane on this song. Bia as a rapper is beyond elite. Like she's like I don't want to hear about her being a woman, and male rappers like apparent like she she transcend all that shit. She can rap better than anybody, man or woman. Like she, she's tough. And then that, but then J Cole though that verse, that's up there too for verse of the year. When he said, "What he say?" Spot her opping them, feeling opportunistic. Yeah, they both using the accent and just. No, that's that song the was videos perfect. Videos hard. Like that song was perfect. That's that definitely one of my favorite songs. Oh, that just yeah. needs to be mentioned. Do you do you have one we haven't spoken about yet? We talked about King Hendrix. Yeah. Um, um I like I like five four three two one take uh offset. I love that song. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was song of the year, but it's one of my favorite songs. I wanna say this is going back to Scissor, and this might be a cheat. She put out the deluxe of her album. And so she had some unreleased records that were on there that have been on YouTube forever. It's this song called 2 AM that I just like, I just had to mention it's one of her best songs. I, I don't know if that counts. It's a deluxe album. It's yeah, you know, man, technically it's old. No. Give me the Kendrick song. What's the Kendrick song? We haven't mentioned his album. His album came out this year. What's the one that's like the stuck one, out? The ones that I found myself saving were um, Silent Hill, him and Kodak. Right. In 95. Okay. I thought that's that's... Probably, yeah, that's up there with uh, Song of the Year, too. Uh, when we met, when I met Ray, Babyface Ray, I had to tell him, Go Yard and Me Wife and Kids. I like, that's, I don't know, it was an opportunity man. to tell the person who made the song, like, yo, I listened to the song for about three weeks straight. Just want you to know, it's that fucking good. It's like, when I listen to Kendrick's album, I don't want to turn it off, though. It's just like, it, it's good music. It's yeah. not like... Like, people say they, have, they don't listen to it no more, or it's like, they ain't really fucking with the album, but it's just like, you go through here, you can skip a couple songs, but it's like, it, I still wouldn't mind listening to them. You here's know what I'm my, saying? Here's like, my cop-out answer. When I first heard the album, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I get exactly what he did. And then I just, I don't often go back. That doesn't mean it's now a, a bad album. Yeah. That just means I don't want to hear him and uh, the girl from Zolar cuss at each other for four minutes. I, and I like that song, too. <laughs> you know... I could play that album in the car if I'm if I'm driving somewhere, and I could play it straight through. It's a it's a movie. Our age, so we Eminem like was Eminem when we were younger, and he had that song Kim. I used to listen to Kim. I used to listen to this but, shit's absolutely crazy. So are you crazy. comparing Kendrick? But to I'm saying Eminem? like, this is not a song I would just like vibe to and clean the house to. But I understood the artistry of that song, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I understood it too. And I appreciate it, and I just don't always. Yeah. I like that album, but I wouldn't call it top. The song five. with Blast was hard. I like that one. That's probably the one I go. I like Rich Spirit. I like N95, Silent Hill. I like. Uh, you like a lot of it. Look at that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Worldwide, uh, no, that's the skit. Uh, um, Savior. Yeah. And I like Auntie Diaries. I, I like Savior. I don't know if I like Auntie Diaries. <laughs> Nobody like, liked that. A little, little too strong. <laughs> but I liked it. What am I going to do with Auntie Diaries in the car? I, I mean, it, it was, I, I just like the content. It was. I get it. Okay, so uh, one more thing, a couple more year in things. What was your favorite sneaker you saw this year? Mine is a very obvious one, but I want to hear yours. My favorite sneaker I saw sneaker this year. Sneaker of this year. So you're a shoe head. Like, you, don't, you have your own sneaker, but you wear a lot of other stuff. Damn, that's a good question. I would say some yeah. Supreme Dunks. You've been wearing those a lot, the black yeah, ones. Yeah, the black ones. Uh, Who are you going to say? My cheat is the, the Travis, the reverse mocha. Any, oh, yeah, those are my favorite. Sorry. I wasn't even thinking. Yeah. Any Travis Scott that come out is part I of I heard you got the all black ones. The mo- yes. I don't, have them, I don't have them with me now, but I, they are on the way. Yeah, I heard you got them. I seen, uh, I seen somebody with them, and they come with, like, these checkered laces, too. They come with the red laces? They come with like five pair of laces. Oh, okay. So I hated them on first sight. 
and then I seen them in person. I'm like, oh, I get it. I'm, I yeah, I'm definitely gonna be wearing those every day. The olive pair, like I might need two pair of those. They, I didn't see those. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you when we get done. Yeah, anything Travis drop is automatically my favorite. You've been you've been rocking the Carhartt. I don't do a Carhartt commercial, but I like what you've been doing in, in that. I'm gonna have to do a Carhartt collab. Yeah, it might make sense. Yeah, because that's all I've been wearing. Yeah, Dickies you've, too. You've been killing. You've been killing the. I've been wearing the Dickies. <laughs> I talked to somebody about you, and they said there's a difference between stylish and having your own style, and they're like, Kevin is both. That's, that's a good way to put it. I like it. Uh, I'm just trying to get comfortable. I'm not gonna lie. And I don't like too many colors. But look, you're stylish. I guess it works. And you have your own style. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Um, best movie you saw this year? Um, Batman. I think was Batman might have technically been last year. Well, I think it's fine. It's fine. No, it's it came out in. At least January. Yeah, you're right. No, it came out in like April, didn't it? It was earlier in the year. Yeah, you're right. It's this year. Yeah, it was this year. All right. I what about you? That. Um. It wasn't Batman. What was it? Top Gun. Ah, that's a nice. I watched that on a plane. It was fire. I've watched that this summer. I loved that movie. It was. I was like, I was like, I hope this plane doesn't land before I see the end of this movie. Cause nah, I'm it was fucking hooked. fire. So I'm gonna go Top Gun. Okay, so last thing before we go, I want to talk about. I looked these shoes up. Kyrie, he wore the KD twos. I don't know what the hell these shoes were. They're the reverse creamsicles. They're incredibly rare. Yeah. I don't know how he got his size. I really he think he comes the, out the tunnel wearing those in the second quarter. You're sitting there on the bench like. When I walked in the locker room, man, he he just pulled him out of his locker. I was like, yo, how did you even get those? I think those were just family and friends additions. But you know that was so long ago. These shoes and circulate and yeah. passed off between twenty different hands. You know, so. Uh, Seeing him with him, it was like, I mean, I, I can expect that. But um, to hoop in him was dope. But I, I think they had a little the, – the, the material was so old. I think he, he slid it yeah. the inside of it, I think. Yeah, they um, say he ripped down the middle. He ripped yeah, it. But uh, got the picks, though. <laughs> got, got the, the picks. Because <laughs> those joints are rare. They they A lot of people don't realize those joints in my catalog yeah. almost because they were so rare. Um, but I appreciate that that – I love you, show. Yeah, he he said, you know, look, if I'm gonna wear anybody's, you know, who I appreciate. Else? Yeah, so man. it was a, uh, it was dope to see. I was, was blown away that that pair existed, and he had him. He's playing basketball on him. Now they're somewhere in like a garage, ripped in half. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> he got the picks. That's all it's about. So uh, big holiday plans. You you're on the road, huh? Yeah, we leave to go to Cleveland. I think that day, a Christmas. Don't um, slander me, but Christmas in Cleveland sounds awful. I'm sorry. Christmas away from home sounds awful, man. But hey, it's part of the lifestyle, man. Holidays don't even matter. Are you are you doing your Christmas shopping, or are you? I don't. I don't. I don't think so. No, your presence is enough. I give presents all year. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I give gifts. I'll definitely. Yes. Be, I'll show up here on like the 23rd with some gifts. I definitely did. I've given. This is like I've given you gifts before, and like you're just, a man who doesn't require gifts. Yeah, don't give, don't buy me anything. Yeah, I'm gonna get you some, some, some sentiment or something. <laughs> but uh, nah, look, happy holidays. I think uh, I like our albums list. I don't think we missed anybody too bad. No, we, no, I think it was pretty. I think people appreciate the list. Pretty complete. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of love for yeah. the people who deserve it. Yeah. If we forgot you, I'm sorry. Next time, but, next uh, year. Until next time. KD, et cetera.